Hi, I'm Jet Cuso, and for a moment, let's imagine. The year is 2012. The year everything changed. The year we, as a collective species, had to deal with a threat unlike any we had ever faced before. Just as the ancient Mayans had predicted, 2012 was the year the world blew up. With love for the Avengers, and with it, the coming of an onslaught of cinematic universes, most of which are horribly misguided. Except for the Monsterverse, but that's a topic for another video. After years of build-up, Joss Whedon and Kevin Feige's improbably good superhero team-up had finally hit the theaters. And what do you know? It was good! And everyone said, hey, that was pretty good. And then Kevin Feige said... The Marvel superhero craze was in full swing. The world couldn't get enough, and even to today, it's only slowed down due to... Merchandise filled every store. Marvel shoes, Marvel hats, Marvel shirts, Marvel comic. <laughs> Just kidding, no one reads those. Aside from that, it seemed like pretty much everything Marvel could touch would turn to gold. That was 2012 anyway. So what about 20... Bakugan, Mectanium Surge. The final season of the original Bakugan series, and a dark, dark era for Bakugan fans. What was once good and pure had slowly worn away into a shadow of what Bakugan was supposed to be. The toy line was bloated with extra toys like Mectagon action figures, Baku Nanos, and uh, this, this, uh, oh. The TV show had become completely uninspired, and the TCG was absent and uncared for in advertising. For goodness sakes, the marbles were barely even round anymore. Lumpy, bumpy, ugh. Bakugan was in shambles, and the fans could tell. It was scary. We didn't know for sure that it would be cancelled, but it didn't seem very hopeful. It felt like a final stretch. And yet, in the middle of all of that, Revealed at New York Toy Fair in 2011, a new fighter arose. Something bizarre, something astonishing, something marvelous. What? No, 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 that's not, ah. Oh. A crossover? In the middle of our darkest hour? You come to me with naught but offering of crossover? For some context, Bakugan is a brand that had never done a crossover before, and has never done a crossover since. This came out of nowhere, and confused the heck out of everyone. Bakugan is a self-contained universe, with its own original monster characters represented by the toys. This would be like Transformers doing a crossover with Star Wars. Okay, um... It would be like Evangelion doing a crossover with God's. Okay, never mind. Uh, this isn't. <clears throat> Weird crossovers actually aren't that uncommon for toy franchises, or really any franchises. Japanese mecha slash kaiju franchises cross over all the time in mixed media formats, and Transformers specifically has crossed over with pretty much everything else Hasbro has ever owned the rights to. You can almost make a complete circle with just my favorite brands. Bakugan to Marvel, Marvel to Marvel Transformers, Transformers to Transformers Evangelion, Evangelion to Godzilla, and there's just one thing we need to finish this circle, and I need it! I need it! Give me Godzilla Bakugan, it's all I've ever wanted, Doho! Why won't you answer my email? So why was this so surprising? Well, while crossovers aren't unheard of in general, it is quite unheard of for this type of brand. We've never seen a line of My Hero Academia Beyblades, DC Super Heroes Yu-Gi-Oh cards, or a generation of Pokemon that includes monster versions of the cast of Riverdale. Magic the Gathering does this kind of stuff all the time, sure, but that's, uh... That's Magic the Gathering. I don't really, I don't, I don't play that game. Godzilla ones are kind of cool, though. You get the point. It was weird for Bakugan fans, let's move on. Five unique new sculpts were released for this line. Five characters from the Marvel Universe. But here's where we get to the first mistake with this idea. If you wanted the Marvel Bakugan, you had to buy them in these Versus 2 packs, which paired each Marvel character with a Bakugan character that they're supposed to... fight? I guess? Which is weird, right? You'd think it would be its own product, but no. 
The whole situation was made really, really weird by the implication that the Marvel characters exist in the same universe as the Bakugan monsters, which implies somehow that these human characters have been transformed into Bakugan marbles and they exist in continuity. It's kind of disturbing when you get into it. They really should have made them a separate product from the main Bakugan line. It hits me as major Uncanny Valley territory to see Iron Man placed at the same tier of importance as... Raisinoid. Let's run through the line one hero at a time. First up, from the Uncanny X-Men, we've got Wolverine. No, no, not that, that one. That's not actually Wolverine. Uh, yeah, there we go. Wolverine. All of the Marvel Bakugan are clever retools of other Bakugan that already existed. Wolverine, for example, is a retool of Talion, Shun's Season 4 Guardian. Two versions were released, a classic yellow Aquas version and a grey X-Force version in Subterra. X-Force might seem like a weird pull, but the Wolverine-led version of that team was a running comic series in 2011. I did research to find that out. <laughs> Stupidly, both color schemes of Wolverine came with the same Pyrus Titanium Dragonoid, so if you wanted both versions, you had to deal with duplicates of the companion Bakugan. And this is the case for every other product in the line as well. If you want both color schemes, you have to get two of the same companion Bakugan. Bad move. Next up, Spider-Man, which is a retool of Raisinoid, and that means floppy arms, bad posture, and a confusing method of closing that you can never quite get the right order for. Mine is the Ventus symbiote suit version, but the classic blue and red was released in Pyrus. What does Spider-Man have to do with Pyrus, the fire attribute? I don't really know, except for maybe that he's got a lot of sick burns! Because he's... It's because he's quippy. He's a... He, I didn't actually buy this Bakugan. It was given to me when I was a child by an old Japanese man who walked up to me after a convention, put it in my hands firmly with a look like I was supposed to protect it with my life, and then just walked away. That is a true story, I'm dead serious, that actually happened to me. In fact, if I had a nickel for every time this has happened to me, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Next up, we've got one of the most popular and worthy Marvel characters of all time, Red Skull. In Bakugan's long history, the Red Skull is the only time we've ever had a toy of a literal nuts. Red Skull was paired with Lumagrowl and came in both a Ventus and a Darkus version, but I think the only difference in coloration between the two is that the Ventus version has a little bit more of a greenish tint to his little suit. I actually think Red Skull is one of the better looking Bakugan from this line. It looks more convincingly humanoid than, for example, Spider-Man, which looks a little bit like the shriveled up monkey's paw used by the child who strangely wished for this toy line to be created in the first place. Next up we have Mr. Captain. Captain Man, Mr. Country himself, Captain American. Being a retooling of Chaos Bakugan Contestier, he's a tall boy. And unfortunately, he's the only Bakugan in this line that I don't own a version of at this point. Not for any particular reasons. Doc Patriotism was paired with a fan favorite questionable example of accidental trans representation, Ingram. Which is weird, because Ingram was from New Vestroya, a full two seasons before this came out. And last but not least, a character that breaks the entire formula we've established so far. You see, Iron Man was very popular in 2011. Being the character who kicked off the MCU, and the only MCU hero with two movies to that point, Spin Master had some incentive to produce more versions of Iron Man than the other heroes. So on top of the classic colored Chaos Iron Man which I own, they made the Silver Centurion styled Ventus Iron Man, the Aqua Stealth Armor Iron Man, and the darker metallic Extremis Armor Iron Man that I did want, but never found. The former two were paired with Raisinoid, and the latter two with... Darkest Helios? Also a new Vestoria boy for some reason. These extra color schemes are kinda cool, but the truly unfortunate thing is that we could have had so much more. Several more Marvel Bakugan than just these were announced, and even fully prototyped. On the website there were these little coming soon pages advertising the Hulk, Red Hulk, Thor, and the Mighty Thor? I don't know what the difference between those last two are, but sure, go off, Spin Master. We've seen prototypes and development samples of at least one version of each of these, and allegedly they were even planning a Loki figure, but we'll never see them. 
according to the wiki, due to Spin Master discontinuing Bakugan entirely. It sucks, because if they'd gotten Thor and the Hulk out, that would have been basically the entire main Avengers lineup, released right in time for the Avengers movie. I mean, gosh, I can only guess, but for all I know, it could have saved Bakugan. If they had just run with this wacky stuff, maybe it would have pulled in droves of Avengers fans. <sighs> yeah, I know. I know, I started out hating this crossover, and I really, really thought it was stupid as a kid, and yeah, it still is pretty stupid, but they have a charm that's grown on me over the years. <sighs> You're not really that bad. I mean, a little strangely marketed, kind of misguided, maybe not very well executed, but not an inherently flawed idea. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. Ooh, a message. Do you want to see Bakugan do more weird crossovers like this modern day? You all know my vote is for Godzilla, but I really want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm actually really curious because there's potentially a lot of brands that would go great with Bakugan. So leave a comment below and I'll actually probably read it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Jet Kuso, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Special thanks to my Diamond Patrons Chell, Nicholas Matrix, and Jedi Master for supporting this video and all of the other ones that you've seen recently, and thank you to my Titan Patrons Verona OC, The One Only Prime, Shivitis, Sierra 107, Skinny Chalk, Dustin Walker, Roman Lewandowski, and my brand new Titan Patron, The Jumping Devil. Thank you so much for joining, if you want to join my Patreon as well, you can support me at patreon.com slash Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Huh?